I'm Danny Ramirez and I play Ash. And when you first see me in the movie, I am sleeping. Uh, and through the film, you'll see that Ash is a very layered person that has a lot of uh, his past that creeps into every single action he does. And throughout it, you'll see the lengths that he's willing to go to to accomplish what he set out to accomplish early on. And the cognitive dissonance that turns into full-blown um, chaos at the end is really um it's really energized with his desperation to to really succeed and, and to to get ahead in life and to kind of um take himself out from under the shadow of um this pressure that is is continuously on him what appealed to me the most about the project uh that that got me really excited to do the, the movie was um after i read it i realized how the dynamics of all the characters really don't live in an isolated fashion, but they're all interlinked. And being able to play in a single setting with that in mind made it really exciting to know that everything that I had to throw down had um, was going to have different opposing forces um, trying to get their own uh, their own objective through that same kind of uh, that same kind of like obstacle course, if you will. Um, and, and everyone's like goals d did become different barriers for the others. And not a, there's no scenario in which everyone got what they wanted. And that was really exciting because he really turned the pressure up and a character like Ash was someone that was just a dream to play. And, and then speaking with Damien, he had a lot of, um, he was as excited at, for the character Ash as I was and cared as much about him and tried to find a really interesting way into what normally would be a two-dimensional character and really flesh him out, give him life and give him some form of love. And that's, that's what got me really excited. But working with David, I, I, so much of what he said right now has got me really emotional. So it's stopping <laughs> my reply, but it was, um, after we did have that conversation in quarantine for the, the, the four to five hours, I felt, um, and I keep bringing this up based on how intense the project got, was that I, that I had an ally and that I made a true friend and someone that understood me and cared about me and made the relationship that we have in this, in this movie be one of the strongest influencers of my entire performance which was, it was amazing to have someone that's, that through, I think there's, there's just so much of how David operates in the room, whether he's acting or not, that creates such a really beautiful space to, to collaborate in. And there are so many times that like, his words really um, were the, the fulcrum point of, of how a scene went for me. And I think that's like, um, even, even in moments that he wasn't even filming, like a day that, that he would just be kind of watching what was happening, there was so much support in that. And then, so by the time that, when we had to throw down in the movie without spoiling anything, um, by the time it got to that point, um, there was just so much trust in that. And it was wonderful every time to come in and play. And, and it's just based on the, the security that I did feel from the very early days um, to the days we weren't even acting together in the same scenes to when we ended up acting in the same scenes. There was so much trust because there's even days that we were offset and we'd have similar viewpoints on the craft and on story. And, um, and that was just, it was so wonderful to know that you had somebody that was an ally from the very get go of, of, um, of first and foremost, who you are as a person and who you are as a performer. Everyone was like that on the set, but I think it, it definitely did um, help me out throughout the entire the entire film. So, David, you see this? Thank you. He's right there. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I think uh, Dennis said something really early on that that also kind of set the tone in, in how amazing this experience was. And um, Havana leading us in the way she led us really also set the tone for the rest of the movie and in how a lot of the times I think you'd stumble onto an ego or 
or, or not, but she just like from the very beginning, since we're seeing the world through Darby's eyes, really established um, a lot of uh, the really good traits of everyone's like collaboration in this movie. And so by the time that like it started going down to the wire, it, there was already this massive trust fall net amongst everyone. Um, and there, everyone just genuinely fully cared. Like, yeah, like just no, like that's one of the harder things to some people are in the craft that you see that are doing it for a plethora of reasons. But everyone at that table, every discussion that was ever had came from the seed of caring so much for the same story, which is the really the one of the most refreshing things. I'm 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 eternally grateful for Damien for so many reasons within the production of the movie that um, I think. Ash as a character that I had to, to take on, there was moments that I absolutely needed his guidance and needed him to, and as he did, he, he, he shepherded me through um, moments in the beginning where I was like, I felt like I was in over my head. Damien as a person is also incredibly caring and um, has so much empathy for what everyone's going through that in a very father figurely way was able to guide me through so much of the initial like the the two weeks of quarantine before going into it really set the tone of um of what ash was and and seeing someone that understood ash as well and had a lot of care for the character and myself and was and and like he i think he really brought the most out of my performance in how he he held me through what normally would be um someone that is not normally held in that way. So I really, I really appreciated that, um, his care for Ash and myself in that. And um, as twisted as the movie gets, this man, I, he's got a, a heart of gold and I think everyone's performance in it was, was made so much better because of it. Um, so I'm eternally grateful for Damien and um, really navigating chaotic seas with us. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I could second that. I, I asked um, in an interview I did for citizenship to uh, the prime minister. She's. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, I, I I absolutely loved it. I think it was one of the most. It's one of the most beautiful places I think I've ever been in my life. Um, probably almost easily up there in the the top two. I I think Colombia, Mexico, and obviously the U.S. I have to say all all four are beautiful, <laughs> but New Zealand. Um, Without shooting without COVID was just, I, I didn't realize how much of a blessing it was, or I realized the blessing it was in the moment, but then even more so shooting other projects with the restrictions. And I think so much of um, being in the country that didn't have a single case and the crew also being as warm as they were, create, like, created the perfect soil for the film that we did um, to really thrive on and I mean, there was just, there's so many events in New Zealand that like every time that we would go back, like there'd just be a different, um, like there was a, a South American festival one time. And then um, just, there's so much life that was just beautiful to see after not seeing someone for like a year and a half. Um, but yeah, I'm eternally grateful for New Zealand. Love it. Kia ora. Um, and it's just, uh, it's just one of the, the happiest places I've ever been in. I had the most amazing opportunity to play Darby, who is a bold, yet also um, sort of timid, yet also very powerful, yet also very um, complex and sort of vulnerable uh, character um, who we find sort of um, in the depths of her experience with addiction and in a state of yearning to be by her mother's side who is ailing. And I think that um, over the course of the film, Darby learns a lot about herself and hopefully then you can learn more about the character too. <laughs> um, I was so taken by the project kind of right off the bat. I am actually allergic to thrillers and scary things. Um, I'm quite a wimp in many ways and um, have a fear of fear. Um, so I did not, um, I'm not necessarily super attached to the genre of the thriller, but I, and so I wasn't necessarily expecting a ton from this script actually, bad on me. And then I read it and was totally engrossed, fully in love with all of the characters and um, 
really felt like I really wanted to play the part and be a part of this. And so um, for me, I think I started to see fear as like a very different art form and um, really an art form all in of its own. And I think that that sort of was definitely one motivating factor in um, making me want to be a part of No Exit. I also think that Darby was someone I fell in love with right away. Um, I'm relatively untrained as an actor and not relatively, I am untrained as an actor. And so for me, a big part of my process is just really if I can fall in love with that person and understand them deeply. And for me, Darby came almost immediately. Um, I was gripped by her story right away and I felt for her. And then the third thing I think has to be Damien. Um, Damien was such a, a powerful force on this film and also made me feel safe with difficult material. And I think that he really was able to um, create a safe environment, a environment where people are listening and compassionate towards one another in the face of violence and, and really exhibited a ton of um, the ways one can build trust. And I feel forever indebted to him for being able to make an environment like that to be able to foster this kind of intensity. <laughs> I am absolutely in love with all of the actors in this film. Um, it was such a powerful experience to be able to be so collaborative and so communal in a time where I think, you know, the past few years, two years, how long has it been? Who knows? Um, we've been in sort of pandemic land. And I think being able to really have this time where we were all collaborating on something collectively and able to sort of be in those gritty negotiations about what this film is and where its heart lies was really important. And they each taught me something so special and different um, about filmmaking and about acting and about friendship and family. And um, really each and every one of them brought something very special and delicious to the process of making this film. And um, I still consider them all very close friends to date and, um, and honestly verging on like film family. So it was, beyond a good experience. There was no bad egg in the mix. Damien was such an incredible director to work with and I have the utmost respect for him as a filmmaker. I think that he has, first of all, incredible vision and um, really has a way of drawing out suspense um, and making you sit on the edge of your seat and feel this like pit in your gut while also somehow still giggling. And that's a manipulative tactic I don't fully understand, but he does a really good job of it. He's also um, really one of the kindest people I've ever worked with. Um, I remember I talked to my team about the fact that I was nervous about who would be making a film like this um, and wanted him like essentially vetted by my team prior to, moving any further in the process because I was like I don't know if I can handle like somebody who like you know finds a lot of pleasure in, in seeing this kind of darkness and Damien is the opposite of that um he he makes these films in part to sort of exercise those things and I think that that's such a beautiful way in and you really felt that on set and I really felt that in my personal relationship with him of being able to feel so held and considered and with such open and beautiful communication between us that really made Darby come alive and also um, really made the set a place where people wanted to be and you know I was I, I really don't think I actually had any days off set I was pretty much on set every single day I think I maybe had one day and I actually missed being on set when it happened just because of the community that was fostered um, and the general energy of people who just wanted to sort of um, really help one another and be compassionate towards what others were going through and, and listen. And I, I really attribute a lot of that to our sort of our leader, the steer of the ship, Damien Tart. So. <laughs> New Zealand is a magical place to film. Um, I remember there's a day where I filmed a particularly difficult scene and um, was having to reach physical and emotional and psychological depth that um, I had been very nervous for going into it. And then I remember completing the scene, feeling this rush of like release that I had just done this and then walked outside of the dark, snowy, gritty studio and into the New Zealand beautiful place that is New Zealand. And there was 
a double rainbow and like the most beautiful sunset happening all at once and birds were singing and the plants were like whooshing in the trees. And I, I, it really feels like it's a place that shouldn't exist. It's so magical. And the people really are a big part of that too. The most welcoming, lovely, generous human beings and um, the culture is rich. The respect they have for their indigenous communities is so powerful. There's nothing about it that felt, I mean, it feels like the perfect, I don't know, maybe I should move to New Zealand the way I'm talking about it. <laughs> I'm very taken by it clearly. Yeah, I think about it all the time. <laughs> Ed is um, a man who uh, has issues. He's flawed, as is everyone in this cast. Um, everyone in the show, movie is, uh, is flawed. And, um, and how he deals with those flaws, and the, um, you know, the hours that, uh, you know, that come up uh, defines him. And um, he's a former soldier. And I like to think of him as a warrior without a war. And he's struggling with, um, you know, with uh, his self-worth. I got to know the cast before we started shooting. And I uh, just want to say that, uh, you know, the future of Hollywood is um, bright, especially when they have to uh, deal with the actors that I had to work with them in this movie. I thought they were all just incredible. Uh, from Havana, Rose Liu, to uh, Danny Ramirez, and David Reisdahl, and especially um, Mila Harris. Um, what a little dynamo she is. Uh, she is just absolutely fierce. And of course, um, can't forget the uh, the incredible Dale Dickey. Uh, just uh, you know, she just became part of my heart in this film. And uh, such a such a great lady, such a great talent, uh, a privilege um, to be working with her in such an intense setting. Uh, I think the script was uh, was uh, spot on. Uh, it had all the, you know, ups and downs and turns and crisscrosses. I mean, anything that you can ask for in a thriller, um, this movie has and the story had. Um, working with the, the, the particular uh, actors in this uh, movie uh, was incredible. Everybody came in, you know, you know, both both guns loaded and, uh, and and ready to bear. It was um, it was just a phenomenal um, time, and uh, these people were just great, and uh, the direction was great. The crews were great. Um, you know, uh, Scott Frank uh, producing this was a uh, was a, a big reason, you know, and uh, and one of the greatest things about uh, doing this movie because he was a part of it. Damien uh, is, uh, was, was very interesting. He's very introspective, uh, very quiet, but um, there's this quiet uh, enthusiasm he has, you know, and um, I got a lot from Damien for what he didn't say. And uh, just, you know, I just, I just liked his demeanor. And, um, and he was so uh, welcoming and, and so uh, intent on bringing out the best that all of us had to offer. So uh, I, I, I loved working with Damien. He, uh, whenever he would ask me a question of the character, it was always so succinct and, and, and thought provoking that uh, you know you had to, whatever answer you had in your head, you know, you thought about it a little bit more. It just it it changed a little bit. So he, he made me go deeper. New Zealand is a wonderful place. It was absolutely wonderful. I know we shot on stage exclusively, but on our time off, you know, um, I got to see some of the countryside, and I even got a chance to go to Middle Earth, <laughs> which was the highlight of my trip. I, I really enjoyed that. I play Lars. Uh, when you first see me in the movie, I'm sitting at a table listening to music. I love uh, heavy metal. That's my, that's my music of choice. I 
Lars is a, I think a special soul who people will um, maybe have a certain idea of him and then slowly over the film will have a different idea of him. Um, uh, he's uh, a man of, of much love and uh, maybe a little bit of confusion. When I read the script, I couldn't put it down. And I then uh, talked to Damien and the way he was approaching each character without judgment, with, with wanting to, to fill out the backstory, really make it a character piece. Um, I just got more excited to see a character-based thriller. It feels a little old school and I really wanted to be a part of that. I loved working with Danny. Uh, I, you know, we, we were in quarantine these, these two weeks in, in, um, in Auckland, in, in New Zealand. And about on day four, I was like, I, I should get this guy's number, <laughs> you know? And I asked, I somehow I found it, I think it was maybe through Havana. And we had a FaceTime and we, we talked for, it's like a four hour, four to five hour FaceTime. I mean, we weren't doing much else in those rooms, but we really got into each other's, you know, past and like what, uh, understanding each other as actors and as people, which laid the groundwork for, uh, for us to go, to be really vulnerable and, uh, emotional w within the story. So I, I, I really loved, I, Danny's a very committed actor. Like he's, I, I, there's no speck of untruth in what he does. Like he, everything has to be truthful and it's really inspiring as another actor across from him. Uh, Cause I feel like it, it just makes my game better. I want, I want to, I want to be more present. I want to bring more to it. And, and, and he cares so much. And, and so acting with you, Danny or anything with Danny has been was was really inspiring and and exhilarating and I feel like we made something special together yeah there's so much play involved too which I know sounds weird in a, in a how dark it got, the movie get, can gets but people there was it felt so spontaneous and because everyone there was no ego on set and everyone was was um listening to each other and playing off of each other it felt like you know it felt like we were throwing a ball around and, and, and every and everyone would be like, all right, now who get the ball and I throw it to you and, and, and we're just having a good time. Um, I'm not sure why I bring the ball concept in, but like there's a sense of it felt so alive every time. It felt like we weren't just saying lines. I felt like we were, we were bringing new things to it. And, and you have like these older actors who are really established, Dale and Dennis, and they could have come in and, and, and had egos like what Danny said, like, but they had zero. They, they were really just down to play and Havana being the, you know, the movie, the, the, the movie hinges on her. She had zero ego too. She was just down to really come in and uh, explore with us. And I, and I think that set the tone from the really, from the early, from early on so that we could go to these really intense places together and trust each other. So, you know, my first time meeting Damien was a callback. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just tried to do my version of the character and I just, it, he popped back on, it was through Zoom. He popped back on. He had his huge, like playful, like grin on his face, and I was like, "Oh, this guy loves this." And and that joy, you know, he he had to wear a mask the whole time, but every once in a while, it would come down, and he just had a huge smile on his face. And I felt so, uh, so supported by him. So um, that element of play, which is so essential, I think, if you're if you're making something dark, you have to have some lightness, or is this going to be all one color? And he brought that to the set. He we were playing with the dialogue. He, he, he knew what he was making, but he allowed us to have the space to really bring it, bring ourselves uh, out um, with it. And that was from the very beginning. Um, from that first time he popped on that Zoom with that big smile, I was like, oh, this guy, this guy's gonna, we're gonna have a good time making this. And, you know, he's, he, he's making this messed up movie, but he's gonna do it with care. Um, it's gonna be responsible. Uh, you know, you have a child actor who's gonna be involved. You know, I, was, I, I wanted to make sure that he was, um, you know, we're not just making a movie about a girl who's trapped in a van in a way that felt exploitative. And, and he was, he was very aware of that, always, you know, really conscientious and responsible and, um, and uh, allowed us to all to bring our full selves to the project. Uh, well, you know, we were in the height of the pandemic, 20, you know, 2021 last year. And to go to this country that had zero infections, uh, I remember getting out of quarantine and I, I got really emotional just walking around 
and seeing strangers, you know, everyone's high, like, you know, interact in, in 2019 ways, you know, and, and, and I remember going to the, we went to out and to this like bar uh, club, you know, me and Danny and Havana and, and people were dancing and I was, and, and I was like, wow, there's so much, there's so, it, it was wild. I don't know if you remember that Danny, but it was a wild, uh, and, and then to go, to take all that freedom and then to go into this studio that was just like a snow globe uh, of hell and, 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 and we we're, were all trapped in this, um, this center. It felt like, a, 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 so, so, so ironic. We were like so free for the first time in, in you know, a, a year and a half, but then we were like trapped in our work. And it was like, you know, I, I thought it was a, you know, that was interesting. And then also the people, they are so friendly and they, they, they're so proud of their country too. And it was amazing to, to they showed us around. We, we went to Rotorua, we went to all these, these beaches, these, but these communities, we got to, a lot of the crew, we, we'd have some time off and the crew wanted to show us, um, mm. you know, uh, some of their lives and, and we, and, and yeah, I, I've, and also the most, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my, in my entire life. Like I, I, I drove the whole Island, uh, on the North or the Northern part. And then I, I flew to the South Island and yeah, it's paradise, you know, in many ways. And, and it's a natural paradise. Anyway, I'm a, I'm a big fan of New Zealand. So no exit tells the story of Darby, a young woman who gets stranded at a mountain visitor center by a blizzard with four strangers. Um, when she's, Outside checking for cell phone service, she discovers a kidnapped girl in the back of a van. Um, can she discover the identity of the kidnapper, free the girl and escape alive? So I first, when I first read the script, um, I finished the script and immediately picked up Taylor Adams novel. Um, I think I read it in one sitting and right away I knew that I wanted to turn this into a film. Um, I think it has a great central character in Darby. Um, it's a great character-driven suspense thriller. And it has some surprising twists and turns that you don't regularly see in this kind of genre, which when I read the novel, just I was totally gobsmacked by some of the things that happened. So um, I just thought that this would be a very fun film to watch um, and a fun film to make. Um, I think that the film actually sticks pretty close to the plot of the novel. Uh, I think that we made some changes about um, the characters and their backstories and how they all came to be there at the visitor center. But I think that the key um, elements to those characters and their relationships um, were there, right there in the novel. Um, so I think if we made some small changes, it was to perhaps take advantage of um, some things that were already there in the novel that we thought we could push a little further uh, and to make things as cinematic as we could. I think the biggest challenge in making the film was getting it to the starting line in the first place. I mean, we shot the film uh, last year in Auckland, New Zealand, um, in the middle of a pandemic. Um, and I feel incredibly uh, grateful that we we're able to, to make the film when we did in between waves of COVID. Um, we were we had a pretty blessed shooting experience. So the logistical wrangle of getting everything to the starting line um, was tough. And I don't think that I believed that it was going to happen until all the actors were on the ground in the country. Um, so that was probably the hardest thing. On a day-to-day -day basis, um, it was perhaps wrangling the snow. Um, so we shot all on a sound stage um, and we had plenty of fake snow on the ground, um, but also uh, in the air. Um, and that was sometimes a challenge. You can just ask Havana who got sort of hosed by a snow machine um, on day one. It was more like a snow tornado. So, you know, it's a little bit of a learning process for everybody. So I think No Exit is, is a film about how character, true characters revealed under intense pressure. Um, Darby's asking herself, who is the kidnapper? Um, and the film asks the characters, who are you? Um, who are you when this happens? Who are you when the pressure is on? And that's the kind of film that I really like. But it's also a film I think about how desperation makes people do terrible things. And all of these characters have a secret. 
all of them are desperate in some way. Um, and as the night unfolds, those secrets come out. But ultimately, I think it's a survival story, you know, and in order to survive, Darby not only has to embrace the violence of the kidnapper, but also some of the worst aspects of herself. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released.